You know, it is possible to be effective in children's ministry without being expensive. I believe most children's pastors would acknowledge that managing a shoestring budget can be challenging as well as frustrating, but it can also be an opportunity to solve problems creatively. The limiting factor of little to no money for props and theme elements forces your ministry team to find solutions in unexpected ways by converting overlooked, everyday objects into valuable lesson backdrops and props. I will offer specific examples of how you can do just that in a few minutes. First, I want to share a well-guarded secret. The secret sauce to being effective with less financial resource lies in your ability to quote-unquote see your end goal in terms of shapes like cubes, cylinders, and spheres, and then locate or combine found objects that can mimic those shapes to build the big picture. Okay, so that may not seem like a grand revelation, but it does require practice and determination to mentally break down all objects into basic shapes, and not everybody automatically understands how to do it. Kind of like missing the forest through the trees, except in our case, we see the forest and need to recognize the shapes that form it, then find similar shapes to re replicate it. This exercise does not come easy for adults because adults spend decades labeling and indexing the world around them rather than simply seeing objects and shapes as they are. Adult artists spend a lot of time unlearning the labeling of objects, opting instead to just draw what they see in an effort to become better artists. On the other hand, children, especially young children, accept this method of seeing almost instinctively. I'll give you an example. In a child's hand, a long stick can be a pirate sword or a lightsaber. Duct tape transforms a pizza box into a breastplate of armor or gets converted into a shield with a few well-placed crayon marks. Here's a fun idea for your next parents' night out. Share a trunk full of different hats with a group of five to eight-year-olds, offer no instructions at all, and watch where their vast imaginations take them. Better still, Put on a hat and join in the fun. Don't take charge, just participate. Children have this ability to fill the details in with their imagination. And that is good news for a cash strap budget because it means you effectively engage a child's imagination during your lesson or presentation. If you do that, you capture their attention and ultimately plant the seed of knowledge deeper into their psyche. This principle works when you harness the power of free play as opposed to structured play. Let me briefly explain the difference between the two. Free play allows children the freedom to make up their own games and rules, essentially creating their own world of pretend with the safety net that what happens in pretend stays in pretend. While engaging in free play, children may act out different roles and scenarios to see how others react. They're learning how to relate and understand the world around them on their own terms. An example of structured play would be Little League Basketball or Soccer, which is organized by adults and controlled by rules and penalties that have been predetermined. Both activities are beneficial to a child's development, sense of self-worth, and social game, but free play, as opposed to structured play, can help open a child's mind to be more receptive to your main message. By intentionally allowing room for free play in your lesson, you are simply tapping into a child's natural curiosity, their sense of wonder and discovery. Of course, once you have a ready and willing mind, you've got to be prepared to pour in the main message, then reinforce it in a variety of teaching methods. Choreographing scheduled interruptions creates a sense of something special is happening. It's hard for a child to miss the action if they think it is unplanned. They'll want to see it play out. Using multiple characters or voices to reinforce that message will hit different auditory senses, snapping a wandering mind back to the central point. Try to change the voice delivering your message about every five minutes. Constructing props and backdrops appeals to a child's visual sensibility. While laboring to get the visual presentation just right, don't underestimate the power of sound effects to enhance an atmosphere. If you have access to the internet, and I know most of you will, you have hundreds of free sound effects at your fingertips. Sound effects help you extend the boundaries of your four walls or lift the roof right off the building. The sound of a spaceship landing with a few adjustments to the room lights can signal the entrance of a special guest. Add in a little dry ice with a floor fan and you can create an immense, um, immersive experience with very little cost. Traffic sounds of a big city during an audio report from the man on the street turns our, tunes our senses to accept that the report is happening somewhere else in the world. The same report could include animal noises from a farm, jungle sounds, seagulls at the beach, 
cars at a racetrack, the list is endless. Utilize sound in a way that helps establish location without relying on expensive visual aids. When planning a curriculum of lessons, consider dwelling longer on a single point, but reinforce the message in a variety of methods over the course of four to six weeks, using puppets, songs, skits, a special guest appearance, Bible stories, and even field trips. By working through fewer main messages in a year, more preparation can be devoted to setting a stage or the room to enhance that main message. Children will learn foundational truths that are relevant and meaningful without feeling like church is just another busy day at school. Since each week is not a self-contained lesson, it leaves room in the schedule to form relationships through small group discussion. Perhaps the biggest benefit to covering less material in a year is that lessons, once again, are embedded deeper into the mind through reinforced variety of senses engaged. Would it save your ministry money to have someone else build your VBS set, then just give it to you at no cost? Consider setting your VBS later in the summer than other churches in your area and acquire a set created by a church with broader resources. Your cost is simply to dismantle and remove the set construction as a service and a thank you to your partnering ministry. In addition to learning to see the found objects and discarded packaging as shapes that can become teaching props, you will need to build a dream team of volunteers that can help you fulfill your vision for your community. Your volunteer team should include, at minimum, a maker, someone who likes to work with their hands, a sketch artist or a painter, and someone who can recruit others to help you as needed. And maybe that'll be your role, but if you have a go-getter among your parents, you may want to recruit them to make sure things are getting done. Once you recruit volunteers for, make, for making and painting your space, allow them to take ownership of their respective roles and use their influence to identify additional helpers. Now it's time for you to share your vision with your church families during a picnic lunch at the start of each school year. Be clear about your goals and ask for help in specific areas. If you describe the role you desire to fill, you are more likely to have volunteers fill those roles and take ownership of the outcome. Go so far as to write your volunteer needs like a job description and include how many volunteers you want for each category. If the role fits a person's interest and talent, they are more likely to offer their time. The reason most people do not volunteer is the fear that they'll be asked and expected to do something outside of their comfort zone. So ensure success for your program and for the staff that makes it all work by matching the task to the job description and stick to the plan. The fastest way to lose your help is to burn out their energy. Show that you can clearly define roles and stick to it and the word will spread that volunteering is fun in your ministry. So I've shared a few ideas already, but as promised, I wanna give you some specific examples of creative ministry techniques with little to no cost involved. Consider delivering your devotion by a flashlight, lantern, or candlelight. The room is themed in darkness to amplify the need for light to move into a dark place. Also, many villages around the globe do not have electricity, so an opportunity exists to take solar panel lights into dark huts and bring the gospel message as well. In this way, church missions learn a church missions team can serve physical needs while opening the door to serve spiritual needs. This method works best if led by small group leaders in groups of 10 or less to prompt discussion. There are a number of props that can be enhanced with pool noodles. The category is so big you'd be best served just to Google it. I mention it now because this time of year is a good time to hold a noodle drive and collect as many of the foam tubes as possible before they get thrown back into winter storage. They're also pretty inexpensive if you purchase them new. Noodles can be twisted around carpet tubes, also free items you can pick up at a carpet store. Coat hangers can be installed inside the noodle to force it to bend into tight turns and create shapes. When noodles are cut open with scissors in a spiral pattern, they look like the kind of curly vegetation you'd expect to see in a Dr. Seuss book. If you need to create an out of this world backdrop or a whimsical forest, take a fresh look at the possibilities hiding inside the humble pool noodle. So you may have figured out that being effective without being expensive does have a cost. You'll spend your time preparing object lessons, developing leaders, and searching for found objects that are just itching to be turned into something great to enhance your message. What you save in dollars, you will invest in time. And that is why growing your volunteer dream team is so important. I think your church will recognize you make a lot, a little go a long way, so that when you need to ask for help with funding a project or an activity, you'll have a solid track record of good stewardship and will be more likely to meet your funding goals.